Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and, of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 6th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Let's get the bad out of the way first. The Annapolis Police Department is investigating several violent incidents which occurred in the city over the weekend. Among the 317 calls they handled, the most violent included two shootings, an assault, and an attempted armed robbery. The first shooting was reported on Friday, October 2nd at about 8.19 a.m. when police responded to the Anne Arundel Medical Center for a gunshot victim. He was not able to identify specifically where he was shot in Annapolis, but police are investigating. The second shooting happened also on Friday at about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. They responded to the 1100 block of Madison Street, which is right near President Street in the Harbor House community. And officers located a subject with non-life-threatening injuries. He was transported to the hospital, and detectives are actively working that case. Over on Clay Street on Sunday at about 9 o'clock p.m., there was an assault and robbery. An adult male was walking along the street, was assaulted and robbed of his wallet, cell phone, and keys. He did sustain minor injuries that were treated by the Annapolis Fire Department on the scene. And on Sunday at about 7.30 p.m. along Forest Drive in the 1300 block of Forest Drive, that's right near the intersection of Tyler Avenue, an adult male victim reported that he was held up by three unknown individuals armed with a knife, a gun, and a bat who demanded money from him. One of the suspects struck him in the leg, causing minor injuries, and there was no word on whether they were able to escape with any of his property. In all four of these, the police do not have any suspects identified, nor were there any arrests made. Up in Anne Arundel County, the police are investigating another murder. This one was up in Glen Burnie. It left one man dead of a gunshot wound on Sunday night at about 8 p.m. The police responded to the 600 block of Crane Highway north in Glen Burnie for a report of a fight. When they arrived, they did find an unresponsive adult male lying near the front door of the business. The victim was identified as Jose Salvador Mancia Aguilar. He was 23 from the 400 block of Irene Drive in Glen Burnie. Unfortunately, after being transported to the hospital, he did succumb to his injuries. This is a very active investigation, and police are asking anybody that has any information to contact them at 410-222-4731. If you want to remain anonymous, you can call the tip line at 410-222-4700, or you can call Metro Crime Stoppers at one 7 lock up Hey, are you an artsy kind of a person? Or maybe you might know some artsy kind of people. The Annapolis Arts District has started a marketing campaign to expand the community on the West Street Corridor. This is the Annapolis Arts District. It is the home of artists, craftspersons, galleries, art teachers, arts organizations, and other creatives. And they're looking for more people to join. There are several empty storefronts. There are several co-op office spaces. And there's actually going to be some more because Circle Creatives is looking to add about 5,000 square feet of new artist studio space. What's the benefit of the Arts District? Well, people that produce and sell within the Arts District qualify for a state income tax modification on arts-related work created and sold in the designated Arts District. There are property tax deductions that are available for renovating buildings for art use, and zero-interest loans may be available for facade improvements. Eric Evans, who is the executive director of the Annapolis Arts District, said now is a good time to negotiate favorable lease terms for retail space as COVID and Amazon have slowed the demand for retail space. A properly negotiated lease now could put you in a favorable position when things return to normal in the future. Some of the people that are in the Arts District include Maryland Hall, Stage 1 by the Maryland Theater for Performing Arts, Nancy Hammond Editions, Kim Havel Art, Circle Creatives, the Bates Legacy Center, Maryland Symphony, Live Arts Maryland, and there's dozens of others creative professionals in that whole area. You want to go to ionanapolis.net. You can check out our article there, and we've specifically listed 11 spaces that are available right now, ranging from 200 square feet all the way up to 7,000 square feet all along West Street. If you want to get more information, head on over to annapolisartsdistrict.org slash space opportunities. And finally, as we wrap it up, congratulations to the Maryland State Parks. They are reporting a total of 17.1 million visitors to date in 2020, and that surpasses their all-time record of 14.9 million total visitors in all of 2019. 
So it looks like 2020 is going to be a banner year for the Maryland Park Service. Governor Hogan said our state parks have seen record numbers this year to exercise safely, get some fresh air, spend some time with family. I want to thank all of our park rangers and staff who have continued to provide a seamless level of service during the pandemic to ensure these valuable state resources remain accessible to all Marylanders. And the parks have been so busy that when they do get over capacity, they do close the parks. And this year in 2020, they have closed them a record 260 times. If you're curious about the average annual number of closures, well, that's only 79. So that gives you an idea of how busy these parks have been. They are really a great resource. And you want to go to ionanapolis.net, look for this article. And down on the bottom, the very last word in the thing, I've got a link to all the park services. And you really ought to check out and see what our Maryland State Parks have to offer. Okay, that wraps it up for the news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day for updates to these stories and more. If you are someplace you can leave us a rating or a review, please do that and let your friends, family, and colleagues all know about the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, how to get it, how to subscribe to it, and push your luck and tell them to give it a rating or a review. Other than that, you need to hang tight. We have George Young with your local DC MDVA weather coming up in just one minute, but first... Here's Rick Peters from Solar Energy Services. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But while solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010, and it's been paid off for almost five years, and I no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years. If I waited for cheaper solar, I'd still be paying an electric bill. At Solar Energy Services, we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait. So what are you waiting for? Sunshine's a wasted. Call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DCMDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DCMDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DCMD VA Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Tuesday, October 6th. Yesterday brought a great start to the work and school week with sunshine and temps near 70 degrees for most. And today will bring more of the same, though likely a few degrees warmer with afternoon highs in the low to mid 70s. Then comes another sunny and warmer day Wednesday with temps in the upper 70s to maybe even lower 80s in spots, though it will be a bit of a breezy day ahead of a cold front moving through from the west, which will then drop temps back down to near 70 on Thursday and in the 60s for highs Friday afternoon. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DC MDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there. Stay healthy and be safe. And be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and use our website each day at dcmdvaweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Annapolis may be Maryland's state capital, but it's also the sailing capital of the world. And whether you call Naptown home or are just planning a visit, a cruise on the Annapolis Maritime Museum's newly restored skipjack, the Wilma Lee is a perfect opportunity to sit back, relax, and let the wind carry you across the water. Whether you're looking for front row seats to the Wednesday night sailing races, a guided sailing heritage tour, or an evening cruise to enjoy the extraordinary sunsets over the Chesapeake, a cruise aboard the historic Wilma Lee is the perfect way to connect the bay through both cultural and ecological lenses. The Annapolis Maritime Museum is making sure all safety protocols are undertaken, including social distancing and requiring masks while boarding. And the boat is open air, allowing plenty of space to socially distance. Tickets are available at at Ameritime.org. Private cruises are also available. Visit Ameritime.org for more information. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. 
And don't forget about our website, IonAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at IonAnnapolis. This daily news brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m.